Our conversation today will be with Patricia Wright, lemur specialist, anthropologist, world-class conservationist. So honored to have you here. Why lemurs? Why Madagascar? Of course, that's where they're from, but I know that's where your work is. And, and why rainforests? I loved rainforests just because of the feel of the rainforest. But I didn't realize that there were some rainforests that were critically in danger of disappearing mm -hmm. until I got to Madagascar. And it was in Madagascar where I discovered a new species of lemur to science, and that was pretty exciting. But then when the timber exploiters came in and started to cut it down, mm -hmm. I was really upset. And when I asked the, uh, the, the head of the forestry department, you know, to make a, a protected area of this area that had so many beautiful lemurs in it. And he said, I think it's a good idea, but we don't have any money. We're Madagascar. So if you find the money, then I'll make the national park with wow. you. Wow, wow. And so that was pretty exciting. And we did. And that was in what it, year? And that was a long time ago. It was in 1989, 87, something like that. It was and a that long forest time ago. is huge. I mean, I've been there with you. As, yeah. as you know, I was there with you this summer, and it's just, it's an. I can't believe you created that. It looks like it's been there forever. <laughs> yeah, it's 125,000 uh, acres, wow. and it is beautiful. It is and astounding. We, Astoundingly we, beautiful. I recommend to anyone, if you can get there, it's exquisite. And how many species are in it? Oh, a species. Lemur, a so lemur, okay. as many animals. <laughs> okay, we've got about 13 or 14 species of lemurs, 125 plus species of frogs, many reptiles and chameleons are fantastic and, and, and plants that are found nowhere else. It's just a beautiful place. It really is. I remember at night coming out and seeing all the, the nightlife that came out. We were holding <laughs> snakes and frogs and all kinds of creatures. So you, you, you came to Madagascar. You were looking for this lemur, right? Weren't you mm -hmm. searching for this lemur? So it was mm -hmm. your, your discovery. And then you've discovered that, that lemurs need forests to live in. So what made you then expand beyond this, and now you're interested in doing more forest, building more forests. What made you decide right. to do that? Well, I started even at the very beginning. I realized that you can't just make a national park and, and walk away. Mm. And then I began to realize how complex it really was. So what really interests me as someone who's working in sustainability is that it seems so important, this restoration of rainforests. And I know from the work of Wangari Mathai in Africa, this rebuilding of forests, how, how key it is to both the, the, the life, the, the, the biotic life in, in Madagascar, but also to, to climate in general on the planet. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, we're trying to restore some of the rainforest that's gone. 90% is gone. And so wow. we have 90%. a lot of work to do. Yeah. And so, um, so the climate is, has already changed to a certain extent. And then now with the global situation, it's getting worse. So restoring that forest is a good way to save the people. And the way to do that is to use endemic species of plants. If you use endemic species, then the animals are happy and they can continue to live. But for the people, we need to put a cash crop underneath that forest. So we've been uh, working with them to put in vanilla, peppercorns, coffee, tea. It's, there's a lot of things that can work underneath the canopy of the rainforest. And we want to do that all the way to the sea. Wow. So, so that we can, well, one of the major problems in Madagascar is erosion, soil erosion. Mm. That silts up the, the rivers and prevents mm. the fish from surviving mm -hmm. and all the other wildlife in, 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 the, in the rivers. And so if we can replant, then we can prevent that erosion from happening. I noticed when we were driving across the country, which, you know, it's quite vast, it was all these plains of just look like open brown grasses. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the natural way for the, for the no. land itself, Those is it? Those aren't endemic species of grasses. Those are only grasses that can be uh, continued through fire. Wow. And uh, almost the whole of island of Madagascar, which is huge, you know, they call it the island continent. Um, but it was covered with forests, different kinds of forests, endemic special species. It's been isolated for many of the mainlands for over 150 million years. That's a long time. That's why everything's so special there and found nowhere else on Earth. But the people arrived about 2,000 years ago, and they, uh, they brought with them fire and, uh, and iron to cut down the trees. But now they need the trees to survive. For sustainability, you have to really get the people on board. Mm. 
the and, and then get the people on board, poor people like they are. Right. You have to really help them economically, and you have to make it make sense to them that they need those lemurs. And how did you do that? Ah. Uh, one of our silver bullets was ecotourism. Ah. They didn't have any tourists going to Madagascar when I arrived. They didn't? No. And now I, uh, we, we see at least 30,000 a year to, co to come to the park. That's and they bring funds with them. And then we have hotels now, and we have restaurants, and, and we have uh, you know, all kinds of businesses that mm -hmm. are just arising because of ecotourism. Mm -hmm. And they're coming only to see the forest and the lemurs. And the people realize that. Wow. But still, we need more, and we need them to uh, give them some insurance against things like cyclones. When the cyclones come, which there can be as many as 10 a year, the, the, the land, if it's not held down by trees, just mm. erodes, oh. and there's all this destruction, and people's houses fall in. Mm. It's really terrible. If they have trees to hold down the land, then they don't suffer this destruction. Mm -hmm. If they have trees to hold the soil in, they don't have all the erosion and the silting of the rivers and everything. So that's when we got this idea of let's just reforest the mm -hmm, place. Mm -hmm. We didn't think it could be done until we actually did proof of concept. We took the seeds out of the forest and planted them in nurseries, and they grew, and they grew very well, mm. and fairly fast, much faster. In 15 years, we had these trees having fruits and flowers. So wow. that means that's that's food for the biodiversity. Right. So with this kind of idea, we we began to to try to get other people involved in in actually planting out the native trees. You know, there are lots of reforestation projects that use eucalyptus and pine, mm -hmm. but they destroy the soil. They poison mm -hmm. the 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 oh, uh, topsoil. And that's not good for, right. for biodiversity. So we want the native species, they're adapted to living there. Are you having difficulty with other countries coming in and wanting to cut down trees? I oh. know China, you know, taking some of the forest. Oh, the yes, wood. Uh, you've heard about the rosewood. The um, rosewood. There's been a real problem with rosewood export illegally, Ill illegally, so that the Malagasy get almost nothing for it. Oh. And they're just, you know, ferried out. But the Ministry of the Environment is doing its best it to is. try to prevent that. And uh, recently we've made a lot of inroads. And, and what about mining? Is there oh, other mining, mining issues? Yeah. Yeah, there's mining issues. And right now we have gold mining problems. Oh. And our, our issues are trying to, what we're trying to do is keep the gold miners outside the forest. And uh, that's, that's another problem that we've been trying to solve. There's always problems. Always problems. And we have to you know, solve them one by one. And we can't solve them alone. We have to work with, with the people that live around the park. Mm -hmm. And with uh, with uh, the government at all levels. And I know some of the coral reefs are also there's issues with the, the they're having difficulty with growing them right at this at this point is it is yes. that pollution is it what what's the problem with the coral it's reefs? It's silting again, you it's know. It's the silting. Yeah, if uh, it's it's silting and and fishing and overfishing, and, uh, overfishing, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, lots of problems. There's lots of problems in Madagascar. There's no prob There's no. Uh, problem with uh, finding the problems, but finding no the solution. Of, yeah, and, finding, yeah. But you have a really great solution. I mean, reforestation is key. And the thing that's so interesting to me is that it works together with larger global climate change problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need more forests. Mm -hmm. And this will help on so many levels. That's right. That's where our oxygen comes from. And so the more forests we have, the better off we all are. Exactly. And we've been doing a lot of public relations. You know, that IMAX film mm -hmm. that we finished. And, and you were on Anthony Bourdain on oh, CNN. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony was a, a great guest. Right. Yes. Now, we've uh, brought the world's attention to the fact that Madagascar is special. And uh, that brings money. And uh, improve, improving the economy is good for Madagascar and good for the animals and good for the people, too. It really is. And I was, I was very interested to see this sort of relationship of when, when women are involved in the communities mm -hmm. and when education improves. And as you've mentioned, the health issue, when you have those three pieces, you can do this rebuilding. And we saw that one community, the name is slipping my mind, but we saw several of them where they were actually doing better economically. Education was better. Food was better mm -hmm. for the communities. And they were in, doing, in restoring the forest and making it an eco site, an eco touristic <laughs> site. They were able to achieve all all those things. It's wonderful to be able to do all of these things together. Mm. I mean, no part 
of, uh, of uh, sustainability stands alone. Right. You have to work with so many different aspects. And we started out by working with those women's groups. Right. And they have just, you know, they've really done very well with selling handicrafts and running their own businesses. Uh, we worked with education. We just had a, a tremendous grant for the Three Graces Foundation mm. where we're working with the remote schools and teaching them participatory science and critical thinking mm -hmm. and getting them started on the right path very early like you know fourth grade third grade fourth grade and then they will will improve uh, their abilities to get a job when they grow up it's mm -hmm. like it's really fun to work on all these different levels mm -hmm. economics the women are important the men are important too right and training you know capacity mm -hmm. building as we call it but training for at all levels right to to make them take charge of their future to have the Malagasy's and protect their nature, but do it smiling because they have good jobs and good education and, right. uh, and a, a bright future. So what's your plan for rebuilding the rainforest? Do you have a project right now that you're working on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just got a reforestation grant. Okay. Uh, well, we're working with our endemic species, so we're taking the rainforest as it is, and we're uh, putting up nurseries, we're growing the trees that are found in the rainforest. And then we're also adding the texture of the rainforest. You go into the rainforest, you love it because there's all these vines and plants that are in the trees that also have a lot of biodiversity in them. We're taking those plants and putting them in the nursery and growing them too, and then mm. putting them into our, mm -hmm. our forest that we're rebuilding. So that when you come into the rebuilt forest, it has the feeling of the rainforest. Mm -hmm. And then the animals will have that feeling too, and they'll come in. But the most important thing, of course, is training the people to do some of, the, uh, of these new crops. Some of them are new to them, and some of them aren't these vanilla and peppercorn, mm -hmm. essential oils, and you know, things like chocolate, which is very important, mm -hmm. and coffee. <laughs> all these important things. Important to me. Yes, <laughs> yes, they all grow well in a rainforest environment, and our gifts that we have from the rainforest. So if we have more of those gifts, then that's fine. So we're in the mountains, and, and we're reforesting all the way to the Indian Ocean. So it's a big project, mm -hmm. and we have to work with lots of villagers because it's the communities themselves that are doing the reforestation. It's the communities themselves that are they're gaining the, uh, the, the economic advantage when they have these crops, these cash crops underneath that rainforest. So it's a, it's a big project, but we've just, we're starting, and uh, we're going to do all we can for the, over the next five to ten years. And if people want to help, to donate, to get involved in some way, how, how would they do that? Oh, it would be wonderful. We need help. There's so much to do. And many uh, young people are coming as interns, actually working with us. And, uh, of course, people can donate. You can come as an eco-tourist. Uh, Central Val Bio is the name of our research station. It's an all-inclusive re research station. We, we came have, and stayed there. It was, yeah, it was environmental fantastic. arts. You know, we have science going on, all kinds of health and education, working with women. We do everything all together. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, be delighted if uh, if people would come. And, and so the internships are through Stony Brook University. Yes, yes, right, yes. which is where you teach. But That's I know right. I know the center is is in uh, in Madagascar, but you also teach at Stony Brook. So students, uh, people could come study with you here, and then. And go go to go I to Madagascar. Be delighted if they'd come here, and we take uh, Stony Brook undergraduates and undergraduates from universities throughout the United States every year in four different study abroad programs. So it's incredible hiking. Oh yeah, really beautiful. The sound <laughs> of the river is just breathtaking, and you hear it all the time at the center. Yes, because the center is built right on the edge of the rainforest, overlooking this extraordinary w uh, waterfalls and river, and the lemurs are right across from our station. It's really nice. I can't wait to get back. I bet. When will you be back there? I, uh, it, it, it's going to be another month. Another month. I have to do a little teaching. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm really, really, it's a really incredible opportunity to speak with you. And I just wondered one more thing, which is, are you partnering with medical institutions that are coming to, to, to Madagascar to help? Because I know there's a lot of medical issues in terms of people in the backcountry, but also in general. In general, you know, it's uh, health is a big issue for everyone. And so we're partnering with the Stony Brook Medical Center. Oh. And also a new NGO called Pivot, which is oh. uh, help strengthens um, health systems, and the new global uh, health institute that's just been formed 
at uh, Stony Brook. So we're working together with them. That's very exciting. Yeah. So there's really a lot that people could get involved with. You know, oh, there's, absolutely. There's a conservation aspect. There's studying lemurs. There's working with children. And one of the schools I visited right nearby <laughs> was amazing. There was a project that uh, two Malagasy graduate students were working with the children and teaching them about the biotic life in the forest. That's right. And those little kids could, told us, so much information, it was incredible. Uh, and they came to love their forest through that education. Yes, we take them on forest walks and we play forest wow. games. We even have some bands, you know, local bands that are just talking about how wonderful the rainforest is and how wonderful. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of action on the community level with the kids and uh, with the adults, and it's uh, great fun for everybody. Wow, thank you. So you, I know you have these two wonderful books you've written, which were really important to me before I went to Madagascar. Um, are you, do you have any other books in, in, in the works that you'll be writing? I have one book in the works. You know, lemurs have female leaders. They're female dominant. So I thought it might be really interesting to compare what a, a society is like when females are in charge. Mm. So my next book is going to be about that. Very interesting. Well, I'll be excited to see that. Well, thank you so much for coming today. And um, good Bye. luck and with, with this rainforest rebuilding. I, I'm, the world will be watching. Thank you very much. Thanks.